Hi there, and welcome to my capstone project. So, on the first part, I'm going to show you how the layout is. So, our layout is one email server, one Active Directory server, one workstation that all connect together and go launch into a router. So, this is actually a, an operating system router that's also a firewall that connects to our file server. Now let me show you how that works. All right, so first off, let's go to the Active Directory. Let me log in real quick. All right, so our Active Directory is nothing fancy. You know what, it's something small, something nice. You know what, it gets the job done. So let me show you my Active Directory. So first off, we have the administrators. So we have Sarah Jones, me, Matthew Kowalczyk, and then Jordan Mitchell. And as well as we have the group, the IT group. Each of these users are connected into this group. This will be useful for later when I show you my file server. As well as in the HR group, we got Julie Smith, Brett Smith, and then the HR group, HR. They're connected to the HR group. And then we also have the sales organized unit, which has Jim Halpert, Trey Halpert, and Zach Halpert. And they are in the sales group. All right, let me show you now because I didn't want to create a hard GPO for the administrators, what was easier instead was because I wanted my IT team to have basically admin rights, what I did is I gave all of them the exact same members of the uh, admin, which was kind of easier. You know what? I didn't want to do the whole painstaking GPO after I've rebooted my server three times, so it was easier to do just do that. Now let's look at my uh my firewall slash router. So how it's connected is as you saw before, but I'll pull it up again once more. How it's connected is we got it from here. We can we're connected right here in the uh the router right here. But you know we connected to both the file server that's over here and to everything else that's over here, which seems a little weird, but it works out nice. So this is our uh, router. Currently, it's forwarding all the packets from our routing table. So if I show you the routing table, it'll show us the uh, the network to the file server, the network to everything else, and this one's here as a VPN network, which I, it's, it comes in default. I did not set up a VPN because there is no point because everything is internal on my system. Alright, and then the next thing's next. I had a very basic firewall because it's all internal. I just basically told everything, alright, except all the input from ETH0 and ETH1 and the input from it as well. It didn't make sense for me to do anything else with it because it's all internal. But yeah, so that's how my Active Directory is looking like. And then I will be going towards the exchange server next. Alright, so this is my exchange server. Now, exchange was up mess and a half. And if I could, I would have chose never to do exchange ever again. But that I have to say right now, it was a big mess and a half. But it did teach me a lot that exchange is not worth it. Anyways, before I go into that rant... So let me show you how I have my exchange set up. So first off in the back end, we needed to set up some DNS stuff. So we needed to set up the MX exchange uh, file, the auto discovery C name, as well as the IMAP SM SMTP and webmail C name. If I didn't set these up properly, my exchange server would not work at all. Even with those zigs set up, I also had so much more issues with the exchange that, like, oh gosh, I got it from an OWA errors into uh, the exchange server never loading up, to my mailbox crashing. I, I had a little bit of everything. It was just a mess. That's why I do not recommend exchange to anyone anymore. <laughs> uh, let's pull up my back end as well. Let me show off my... Uh, my uh, default site so uh, let's show off the default site first so we have here it shows off the micro I mean the exchange server as well as we also have the cert SRV site we also have a back end for our exchange server here 
nothing really fancy, let me be honest with you. Uh, let's go into over to the uh, mailboxes for like the actual setup for our Exchange Center. So, we have here all our users with all the emails that they have. Very simple, nothing too fancy. And then in our servers, I did before try to set up a certificate, but every time I did, it would actually end up crashing my exchange. So I decided not to do that. It's unfortunate, but it's true. It's just kept on crashing whenever I put an exchange. And then I set up the exchange certificate, it just always crashed after. That's why I've just decided to let it have the certificate error up on the top everywhere and just been like, okay. It is what it is at this point. But at the very least, I can show you my email server working. So let me send an email to one of my users right now. Now let's do it to julie.smith because it's already there. Let's put a test hello. And then we'll even put the time at 12.29 p.m. test. All right, I'm going to send that off right now. Uh, let me open up my Windows 10. Let me log in to Julie Smith. Let me get into there. Oh, perfect. All right, so we're already in there. So I'm going to minimize this a little. So that way we got a little bit of both at the same time. Let's see, did it refresh yet? All right, discard that. Don't discard actually. No, no, no. Let's see. Oh, nothing yet. All right, let's 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 test it out. Let's send something off to the administrator, too. So, test at 12.30 p.m. Oh, there we go. So, we got our 12.29. And we're going to be like, hello to them. And we'll send it back. And um, we'll also reply to this one just in case. You know what? Let's see if it'll work. Hello, admin at 12.30. Let's see if those will work. All right. All right, so we got both of them in here, too. So we got the hello and then the hello admin at 12.30. Look at that. So it's all working out really nice, really crisp. That's how my email server is actually working right now. It's been a tr tough struggle with it, but at the very least, it works right now. So that's why I'm going to take it and leave it as that. And we also have the, the cert serve. There's... Cert serve. Uh, I'll never be able to pronounce that word. <laughs> anyway, so like this is here where we request certificates. I don't think I have anything requested right now, so I don't know if this will fully load. But this is how I've been requesting certificates or attempting to. Because, yeah, you still see the error up here. That's It's just going to say there. But yeah, that's how I've been doing that or been attempting to do that. It's been... An on and off thing that does not want to work. But I hope you enjoyed the tour of my exchange server. Alright, and this is my file server. Let me just log in real quick. My file server is kind of pretty nice actually. I've did some nice features onto it. Like uh, quota limits and also file restrictions. So like certain users can go onto certain files but certain users cannot. So let's show that off. Let's open up my file server real quick. So this is the file server resource manager. This is how I set up certain limits. So the project crimson file, I should kind of show you the whole layout first. So this is how it is. So it's on a different uh, hard drive itself. So if we go in, this is the project crimson file folder. That's the big share. But if we go inside it, we have our three, three, um, Departments, HR, IT, and Sales. So in HR, we can go and access that. IT, we can go and access that. In Sales, we can access that. The reason why we can access it is because we are the administrator and we gave it ourselves all rights to access it. So let me break it down, though. In what I made it so that it's the, uh, the Project Crimson folder. So this folder right here has a hard 10 gigabyte limit. So that means each individual folder inside, if they, let's say this one has 4 gigs, this one has 4 gigs, and this one, let's say, has 2 gigs, we are already at the limit. It won't go anymore because our Project Crimson, our root folder, says that's it, that's the limit. Now, each folder also has a 5 gigabit limit. 
we can honestly change this whenever we want to. So if we go here, you know what, let's change it right now. Let's give it, you know what, let's give it a 50 gigabit limit. You know what, and I'm going to just go and press OK. So now instead, I'm going to refresh that. So now it's instead, instead of 10, it's 50. Oh, I changed it to 500. That, that's, that's a bit too much. We can't do it. Let's put 50. There we go. Now, so you know what, instead we're going to change this now each one to, let's say... 15 gigabits each you know what that's kind of nice you know give them each 15 gigabytes that way they have a little bit more to go through there we go and it's simple as that they now have 15 gigabytes of limit nothing hard nothing easy but you know it's, it's all in a day's work all right and now let me show you how the file server works with the actual user so let me go and pull up my windows account let me just log in so here's julie smith she does not have any access to anything besides the hr sales so let's go in here oh and it's gonna take a second to load let me just double check if i can ping it up oh, there we go so she can't even see the other ones unfortunately that's how big it is. So we were just like, nope, you can't see it. Doesn't matter. You don't get access to it. So this is her HR folder. That's all she can see. That's all she can go into. So she can make stuff over here, I believe. So let's see a new folder. Oh, no, she cannot. She does not have the right permission. See, it just says nope. In the HR folder, though, if she wants to make something new, let's see here. Perfect. No problem. You can put it there. Julie uh, Smith folder. No problem. And then she can throw in stuff in there too because that's technically under her and she still has permission from the HR, so it works out. Now let's see a different user. Let's go... Ooh, let me just do this. Switch user. Let's go with... Uh... Let's go with my account. And then let's go user pass. So we're going to sign into my account. I think this is the first time I'm signing into this account. So it might, oh, never mind, it is not. It's been a while, though. <laughs> so let me go back to here. Now, see, if I go into it, I can see all three of them. So we can see Julie Smith's folder even, too. I can probably write something in here, too, like a test. Let's see. Test one. Oh, yep, so I can write anything in here, which means I can access here as well and here. But I get to see all three folders because... I was the admin, and I said, you know what, let's have the admin do that. And then that's how my file server works as well. Let's show how this account works. Because I am an admin here, I can open up my network and settings. Let me go and uh, view no. Oh, jeez. Never mind this. You know what, let's go to control panel. Ah, I hate the settings. Anyways, let's go to network. Network and sharing. Let's go to Ethernet. So this is one way I can show that I have admin access. So normally you need to go into properties and it'll pop up sign in with an account. But because I have the admin rights, I can just go right into it. But unfortunately, let's say we go back to Julie.Smith. User pass. Let's, let's go back to your control panel. Let's see how we can go and access it. Let's see. If we go in here, we're going to go to properties. We cannot do that. Let's see if we can type in our name. Kowalczyk, uh, user pass. It'll let us in. There we go. But unfortunately, if you're not, if you don't have the admin account, you cannot go in. And that's how my file server, as well as a little bit of my user account works.